So, welcome to the latest episode of On The Beaten Track. You're joining myself and Steve Hall down the beautiful Kingfisher Lake and the Bluebell Complex. You actually joined us on day four of our session. So we arrived on Tuesday, we're now on Friday morning. And it's been pretty tough going, really. Steve actually lost the fish on a zig within about two hours of his being here. And it sort of all seems to be looking up. And then it's just been really difficult to be honest. There's been one fish out the whole time of being here. So we lad over in one of the point swims. And that's been pretty much it, really. When we first arrived, we had a walk, did a good couple of laps to the lake, and we found a ton of fish down in the, the snags, down to the Steve's left and the swim he's in at the moment. Some real units in there, so that was decision made. Steve dropped in that swim. Originally, I moved further round to Steve's left, right in the teeth of the southwest, that was pushing in on Tuesday, thinking that the fish would be on the end of it. That didn't really seem to, to happen, really. There was, I say, there was a lot of fish in front of Steve, and I thought he'd move round the margins in front of me, and it didn't really seem to happen. So I had another walk around, further up to Steve's right, and there was a ton of fish just right in the margins, just cruising past, and again, some real, real units. So, so I, had, I had an unload to the barrow, I was just fishing, just had the rods out. So I quickly jumped around into the swim onto Steve's right, and we decided to stay put. So there's been a lot of fishing in front, but it's just been very, very difficult to get them to, to take anything, to be honest with you. So I've been trying zigs, bottom baits, all sorts, it's just been, been really tough going. But we at least know the fish are in front of us. So I mean, this morning I had a fish well and truly get away with it. So I've been getting some savage liners last night and this morning. And left hand has just pulled right up to the top and the bobbin's been bouncing up and down. It's clearly just a fish shaking its head. I just lifted into to thin air, unfortunately. So it's actually looking really good for it now. The wind's picked up again and it's pushing down into this corner, which it was on, on the first day. And again, all the liners have started. And probably about an hour ago, I've got a little snag bush down to my left, which I've been baiting since we arrived on Tuesday. And I've been <laughs> stopping myself and putting a rod on it up until now. I just want to give them some free bait for a few days let them get the confidence up and then get a rod on it today, which is Friday. So I did that, got the bait and spoon, I've got the waders out and I just positioned it nicely just by the bush. Then he'd been in the water about half an hour, Bobbin's just steady tape, pulled up to the top, lifted into it and just pulled out of it straight away. So I'm <laughs> pretty gutted to be honest, but at least we know there's fish here. They say that the liners are still, still carrying on, we're getting some really savage liners at the moment, so fingers crossed. We might be able to nick one, so we've got to be off tomorrow morning. So we've got about 24 hours left. I'm just trying to nick one. I said at the moment I've got one on a little solid bag down in the edge, another just off another bush down to the right, and one on a zig. And what I've been doing with the solid bags, I'm just fishing a really short three inch hoop link, and then in the bag I've just got a mix of chopped and crumbed up Pacific tuna and some of the mini ultra mix in there. And then I've been topping up with a really good glug of hemp oil, which I said, don't think the fish are on, on the bottom at all. I said, I've got sort of 16 foot of water in front of me, and I think they're somewhere in, in the layers. So I've seen fishing zigs, and then the idea with the hemp oil is that it'll just ping off right up to the surface, hopefully draw them down. I say they are moving in the edges, it's just trying to find where they are really, but I say, you're going <laughs> to carry on trying anyway, and hopefully one of us will have something to show you before we have to leave. So whilst we're just sat waiting for one of the alarms to scream off, I thought I'd quickly run you today who have been fished on this session because if you've seen any of my diary pieces before, it is quite different from what you used to see me, me fish with really. And obviously the first one of those is Ziggs. Now, I must be honest, I'm not a massive fan of Ziggs. Like I say, if you do follow me diary pieces, I'm very much a boily angler and I'm confident fishing over a bed of bait, but with conditions being the, the way they have been on this session, it's pointless fishing on the bottom during the day really. The, we've clearly seen the fish in the upper layers, that's where we need to be fishing. So I'll just quickly run you through my zig setup. So it's just a small size 10 wide gate B. And this is one of the Fox zig aligners. Now I've been varying the colours um, during the day just to try and work out what, <laughs> what they want really. Obviously it hasn't really worked so far but I'm just going to keep doing that and just try and nick a bite. The other thing I've been doing is every hour or so I've just been reeling one of my zigs in probably 10 foot just to try and cover a little bit more water and obviously bring the lead up the shelf 
and you're fishing various depths doing it that way so just kind of keep doing that and just hopefully try and intercept the fish and just try and find out where where they are so moving down to the lead setup it's just a two and a half ounce lead quick release lead clip system and an anti-tangle sleeve and then this is the corda uh, zig line so obviously that anti-tangle sleeve is just there to help kick everything away from the lead on the cast because zigs are obviously prone to tangles and the other thing i do just to aid that is a fish a long uh, figure of eight loop knot obviously you've got that little double section line there which again just helps to try and kick everything away and hopefully prevent any tangles and obviously the, the next setup that i've been using is a solid bag rig now i used to fish solid bags an awful lot years ago really so i don't know why i sort of neglect them now really but so the spot that i've been fishing in in the edge i think it's a bit too blatant for me the usual stiff hinge rig really i just want to set a little trap and be as subtle as possible so a little solid bag with a few chops around and in a baiting spoon is, is perfect for that so i've got three three ounce flat pair lead fish drop off style so we've just got an unleaded leader short unleaded leader which sits over the top of it double ring swivel on one end which is part the usual end of the swivel just pops into the bottom of the lead and then just a short little tiny piece of silicon which just sits over the top of the insert and obviously when that's tightened from both ends and the fish shakes its head the lead drops off and you're just in direct contact with the fish so so that's how i've been fishing and hopefully it'll work before, before we have to leave So I'm just keeping my voice down a little bit. The fish are showing right in the edge. I've literally been sat on my hands for the past few hours. They're showing at less than a rod length from the bank. Just earlier on, there was an absolutely colossal common. It just came right out of the water, literally less than a rod length from the bank. So my heart is literally in my mouth. There's so many fish in the edge at the moment. The, the weather has been prime all day. So it's quite a warm southwesterly is picked up and it's pushing right into this bank and the fish have just got on the end of it and i said they're, they're so close in at the moment i've got two solid bags which are literally just underarmed out just on the shelf they're, they're just showing on the tree line which is just i said where they've been showing i was actually stood in the way as early on it's probably only about four foot deep if that and i said the rods have been out for a couple of hours now and there's all sorts going through my head because they've been showing over me all the time. I, I tipped both hoop baits with a, a small piece of pink NS1 just to give it a little bit of buoyancy and I'm now thinking if they're too blatant. Like, I know they're presented well because they're in a solid bag. It's all sorts going through my head at the minute, have these sussed the hoop baits. So I've, I think I'm going to give it about another hour and then flip another couple of solid bags out maybe take the pink the pink pop-ups off just to just so they're a bit a bit more subtle but I say it's probably the most nerve-wracking couple of hours of the had I said that cotton was absolutely colossal and there's been probably at least about another six different fish that I've seen just showing right in the edge so fingers crossed next time you see me <laughs> I might have one in the net right just got all three rods out for the night now so I had to sit on my hands for hours before the, the amount of fish that was in front of me was just just ridiculous but as you can probably tell nothing nothing happened they, they seem to have stopped showing now sort of after I did that little piece for the diary before there was probably about five or six more shows and then they seemed to, to have moved out but I know last night I was getting some savage liners through the night and early morning and I think what that's been is just fish just hugging that marginal shelf we've got really deep margins here which slope down fairly quickly to sort of 15 16 foot and i think the fish have just come in, been coming back and forward and picking my lines up because obviously my lines just come straight down that shelf so i've decided to come off the baited spot tonight it might seem a little bit strange because I, I did have a pickup off it this morning but i haven't seen any fish show out there today they've all been close in so i've got i've literally just underarm two solid bags right in the edge where you saw them all showing earlier and then my third rod is just down to the left of the swim. Earlier on today, there's a couple showing slightly further out. 
So I cast the zig to one of them and it's gone down with a real crack. So before I've reeled in earlier, I've just put it under the clip, put a solid pipe and put it back out to that same spot. So all three rods are on areas where I've seen fish now. I've just slackened right off. The, the line is literally hanging from the rod tips. Obviously it's Friday night now, the lake's really busy. There's a ton of lines in the water. So I just want to be as stealthy as possible really. Steve's done the same in a swim next door. Three solid bags slacking right off. So it doesn't even seem like there's any lines in the water. So we're just hoping with the rest of the pressure around the lake, it'll just push the fish in front of us. Be able to come in, be no lines in the water as far as they know. And hopefully we'll manage to pick one off tonight. So hopefully the next time you see us, one of us will have a fish in our hands. Right, so good morning. Quiet night last night, unfortunately, no fish in the bank, and to be honest, it sort of left me scratching my head a bit, really. So there, there was fish over me last night. They weren't showing in the same sort of numbers as they were earlier in the evening, but certainly around about midnight, there's about two or three fish rolled right on top of me, right hand rod again. But unfortunately, nothing, nothing came of it. So it's left me scratching my head, really. I, I did take off the small pink toppers, the NS1, just little chops that I put on the top, because I, th I thought, you know, that might be a bit too blatant, that's why they, they've ignored them, but so I just switched over to a standard bottom bait and just trimmed down. But that didn't do anything either, so it's it's sort of hard to know what what I would have done differently really. I say if everyone else had been catching on the lake, I'd, I probably would have been tearing my hair up, but I say there's only been one fish out since we've been here and that was on Tuesday, so if everyone else was catching and I wasn't, it might have been a different story, but I say it's just just been difficult really so no can't really put my finger on what I would have done to, to change it really it's just, just one of those things like I say we knew it wasn't going to be easy Kingfisher sees an awful lot of pressure How's this for timing? Literally everything is away. <laughs> We've literally just been stood over the rod saying we give it another 45 minutes. So the bivvy's away. Just about to start loading some stuff into the car. And the right hander where I've seen them showing all night has <laughs> just ripped off. Literally can't believe it. New PB common. 29.10. Absolutely over the moon. I said they've been showing over me all night long. And <laughs> <laughs> so they've been doing me nothing. I, I literally didn't know what I was doing wrong to not get a take and it's finally happened, so absolutely over the moon. Jet black common. Just quickly flipping around, show you the other side. There's the other side, absolutely immaculate. This one's taking on a solid bag presentation that I showed you earlier. A Pacific tuna, just crumbed up. Some mini ultra mix, and like I said, I took the pink NS1 toppers off last night and just switched over to a standard bottom bait because I, th I thought it might be a bit blatant and it's, it's paid off. Absolutely over the moon, new PB. Alright, let's get him back. Right, so, this is the real end of the diary piece. So, I'm on cloud nine. So, we going home on very happy angler. I just cannot believe what, what's just happened. So, we were literally stood over the rods. And we said how long should we give it and we said 45 minutes and as soon as we finished that sentence the right hander would have seen them showing all night just let off three single beeps we ran down to the rod the rod tip twitched i hit it and <laughs> say so, new pb common 29 10 so, so absolutely over the moon so big thanks to steve for the shots he got some awesome shots in the water and that so yeah absolutely over the moon so Hopefully next time we come back it'll be Steve's turn to, to have one, I say we'll certainly be coming back after seeing that and it's, it's an absolutely beautiful place so yeah we'll be back down so I'll catch up with you next time. Though.